Puffin is an iconic, you know, uh, African snake. It's found pretty much throughout Africa, but yet we don't know things. And the beauty about this thing is just like, we just set up some video cameras that were recording what they were doing, and we find that. That's the beauty of actually watching an animal in nature. My name is uh, Xavier Glodas. I'm a doctor in biology. I started studying snakes about 15 years ago. I've been working on snakes for 12 years in America, and I uh, came here about four years ago to study puff adders. So animals exhibit different uh, foraging strategies to catch prey. Um, at one extreme, you have ambush predators that typically lie in wait at a position, waiting for prey to come by and, and, and catch them. And at the other extreme, you have what we call active foragers that actually uh, move around the environment looking for prey. Puff adders are a perfect example of an extreme ambush forager. So what they do is uh, they actually come out and they look for chemical trails that are left by prey. And once they actually located uh, a good spot where they have evidence that, uh, that the prey was there not too long ago, they actually they will set themselves up uh, and lie in a bush uh, until prey comes by. Now what's critical is actually is for the snake to be able to draw the prey towards it. And they've actually evolved a mechanism, in that case the lingual luring behavior, which actually allows them to draw the prey towards them, at which point when the prey is actually close enough, they actually strike and catch it. Snakes use their tongue to smell the environment. That's really one of the number one senses. On average, a chemosensory tongue flick is, means when the snake is inspecting its environment, uh, approximately average about half a second. While the lingual luring, so the, the use of the tongue as a lure, the tongue is actually extended out of the mouth for about eight seconds on average. And it varies from three seconds all the way to 30 seconds. We initially spotted, this is discovered those, uh, those lingual luring based on the fact that the tongue was, was, you know, was extended out of the mouth for so long. We've noticed that the lingual luring only occurs with frogs, so that actually suggests to us that, uh, that, uh, that puff adders are able to discriminate between uh, frogs and the other prey types, such as rodents, birds or lizards. It seems that the frogs are actually unable, um, the, the frogs are unable to actually spot the snake when it's lingual luring. The study took place in the Dino King Game Reserve, which is a, a game reserve located about 50 kilometers north of, of uh, Pretoria in Gauteng. In total, we were able to track about 86 different puff adders. So we implanted transmitters into them, and, uh, and uh, we wanted to see, we really wanted to, to just have a, a look into the secretive lives of those organisms. I spent most of my time there for about three and a half years, and uh, my daily routine was really just uh, wake up and go and track snakes. Uh, sometimes, at some point, we've had up to uh, 40 different snakes with transmitters, so that actually that fills up your day completely. When you have such a large uh, sample of snakes, you know, 35 or 40, actually, you need to be up by sunup, and uh, you will probably, you know, actually be walking the bush tracking your snake by sundown. After I did my PhD, I was looking for an adventure, and, uh, and uh, I think I've got the adventure I was looking for by coming to Africa. I've had some very cool, uh, very cool and close encounters with, uh, uh, on foot with lions, buffaloes, rhinos and elephants. So that's four of the big five. A lion charging you puts you in your place and you just slowly back up and go back into your vehicle and, and just drive away being, being grateful to still be standing on your foot.